wir sind jetzt in der US-Botschaft in Berlin, also sind wir quasi auf amerikanischem Boden mitten in Berlin und gleich treffen wir den Botschafter John B. Emerson und sprechen mit ihm über die Botschaft, über sein Verhältnis zu Berlin und natürlich auch über die US-Wahlen. So now we are in the US Embassy with uh, John Emerson, the ambassador in Berlin. So, hello. Hi, welcome. Thank you. Herzlich willkommen in the Botschaft. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we want to just uh, walk a little bit through the embassy and ask him some questions. So, my first question, Mr. Emerson, is what is your favorite place in the embassy? My favorite place in the embassy is actually what we call the Quadriga Room. Okay. And it's outside my office. It's this semi-round room with the high windows. People can sometimes see it from the ground. And it look, it, you go out to the roof of the embassy. We have a big round table there. It's absolutely wonderful. And I have this incredible view of the Brandenburg Gate, the Quadriga, the um, uh, Reichstag, and uh, the Chancellery. So that's my favorite spot. It's just gorgeous. And uh, do you like to relax there after a stressful day? Well, I don't really relax there after a stressful day. I mean, my ideal relaxation after the stressful day would be to go, go out and have dinner with friends or drinks with friends or um, work out. I mean, I like to work out physically, whether it's play tennis or, or even just go home and get on the elliptical and watch a TV show while I'm doing that. Oh, okay, that's great. So, uh, what is a typical, a typical day as an ambassador in Berlin like? Well, there are no typical days. I, first of all, I'm out of Berlin two to three days a week okay. because a lot of people said Berlin is to Germany as Washington or New York is to the United States. Mm -hmm. You need to get out and travel around the country. I have traveled to more than 120 separate different places within Germany. I've made, and that doesn't include multiple trips. So a typical day when I'm in Berlin, I'm typically in the office. I will have people coming in to meet with me, both internal folks with the mm -hmm. embassy or people who are visiting Berlin or coming externally. And I'll probably, maybe I'll have a speech mm -hmm. somewhere in Berlin. And uh, it's entirely possible I'll have a meeting at the Chancellery or the Foreign Ministry or the Ministry of the, uh, the Econom Economics and Energy. It, it just depends, or the Defense Ministry. It depends on the day. But I think you think about meetings outside the office in Berlin, a speech or press round table, and then meetings in the office. And then uh, something in the evening. I always have something in the evening. So if you have guests in the embassy, probably you're going to show them the embassy. So maybe yes, we, just we do walk that. A bit sure, and sure. Just uh, talk what we see. So I well, guess this is yeah. uh, the thing to know about the embassy is this spot is quite a historic spot. Okay. It was the site of Blucher Palace, okay. and this is the guy who brought the quadriga that sits on the top of the Brandenburg Gate yeah. back from France after Napoleon stole it. <laughs> so he was awarded the opportunity to build a beautiful palace here. And the Americans bought it in the early 1930s, actually, to become the U.S. Embassy. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, um, then uh, when the war, World War II started in 1939, we pulled our ambassador. Yeah. And, uh, and then, of course, at the end of the war, this area became literally part of no man's land okay. where the wall was. And, uh, and then after the Divenda, the fall of the wall, we were able to reacquire this property from the Berlin government yeah. and build this wonderful embassy and on the site that we uh, where we traditionally had our embassy and we can see a piece of the wall yeah that's uh, here, one I of guess. the uh, one of the great things is we have well we're in by the way we're in an area here that's our cafeteria mm -hmm. and this is an area we call it the fireplace you might want to spin around and show the fireplace nothing no fire right now but uh, and then come on over here Uh, but this is an area where we often have receptions yeah. and, uh, and events, but we have a piece of the Berlin Wall with one of Thierry Noir's uh, iconic uh, paintings on it. And uh, uh, of course, if you go to the East Side Gallery in Berlin, you can see many, many uh, parts of the wall and, and, and a lot of Thierry Noir's work. So that's very special to have here on the embassy grounds. So we talked about your favorite place in the embassy. What is your favorite place in Berlin? Well, I have a lot of favorite places in Berlin. Of course, we live near the Grunewald, so we love the Hundsee, yeah. the dog lake. We'll run around it or take our dogs swimming there. We love 
some biking in the Grunewald and also I, I play some tennis in there as well. Um, love Cafe on Noem Zay, that's where we always tell people to go if they want to come and see a really good beer garden. And, um, and we just, there's so many wonderful uh, restaurants and clubs and places to sit in Berlin, uh, you know, particularly uh, places around the, along the river or along the lake. Um, we're just big fans. We try to explore as much of the city as we can. We've done bike rides through vetting. Uh, our daughters, of course, are big fans of Kreuzberg and Neukölln. <laughs> and uh, so we, we just, we love the whole city. And we're actually talking about buying an apartment here oh, okay. when I'm done with this job. So we always have a good place to come back to. Um, but I, right now, by the yeah. way, we're outside and we also, during the beautiful, you know, spring and summer, we do events out here. And this is a sculpture called Berlin Totem okay. by Ellsworth Kelly, who recently died. He's a very famous sculptor. Mm -hmm. And you know how they got it in here? Uh, with a train, I heard. A helicopter yeah. initially, and <laughs> oh, then helicopter. ultimately they had to put it and lower it down here. Yeah. But it's, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. So, and this is a, this is a fun area we've had, we can, we can do parties out here with a lot of people or events, but of course you always have to worry about the weather. Yeah. So one thing we're talking about is whether we can somehow put a roof up here, if you just show up top, and uh, and maybe enclose this uh, so we can have it as a all weather um, place for the uh, for the embassy. Oh well, that's nice. So we heard at the beginning that you speak a bit German. Yeah, so... ich kann Deutsch besser verstehen als sprechen. <laughs> What's your favorite word in German? Oh, Schmeckerling. Why? Butterfly, because I think it's funny. <laughs> I think what, what do you? What's the English word? You know, butterfly. What's the French word? Papillon. What's the German word? Schmeckerling. I mean, it just, uh, it, it's kind of, it, it cracks me up. So uh, anyway, there are a lot of great words. I like this Herzlich Willkommen thing too. That's, that's always nice. <laughs> Um, so we, since we are right now in the embassy and we know it's um, a secure place, so how much security staff is working for you? There's a lot of security here. Of course, we have the Marine Guards that, uh, that guard the embassy. Uh, and then um, there we work very closely with the local uh, law enforcement agencies to make sure we're very, very secure. This is an unusual embassy in that uh, most American embassies aren't this close to a city center or um, uh, to so this close to um, main streets. So it's uh, it's really great, I think, mm -hmm. to have an American embassy next to an iconic part of Berlin yeah. or part of an iconic part of Berlin that that is really much more open and, and accessible to people. And that's that's an important message to send. Okay. Do you want to walk down the hallway and see some of the other art or? Well, just be, we want to go a bit outside maybe oh, with sure. you and then we can do a okay, little great. walk. Okay, um, great. I have a question, another one for you. You were appointed ambassador by President Obama. Yes, that's what correct. What was your most memorable moment uh, with him? Well, there are a lot of memorable moments. Of course, uh, substantively, I'm uh, as ambassador, I'm part of all the uh, what we call bilats, the yeah. bilateral meetings between the president and the chancellor. And so to be in the Oval Office or at Schloss Elmau or wherever we've had these meetings, um, or even most recently in Hanover, I mean, that's always memorable and, and important because they're two such consequential leaders, you know, of our country now. And we're getting attacked by a tree. And, um, uh, and, and, but, but I must say, in terms of the bucket list moments, yes. um, probably the best one was when the president invited me on to Marine One, his oh, okay. helicopter, yeah. at, at the Munich airport after Air Force One arrived. And I greeted him and I flew with him in his helicopter all the way up to the Bavarian Alps where we had to Schloss Elmau for the G7. That was a lot of fun. So you like to fly? Oh, I love to fly. I've also had a chance to fly in an F-16 oh, really? out of one of our military bases, which was really uh, a, a, an extremely ex exciting and exhilarating experience. We actually got up to seven Gs. Oh, okay. And you can feel that, let me tell you. <laughs> So now you have an impression of what the embassy is on the outside like, and now we just follow the inviting to show a bit more art from the inside. So okay. maybe we can go uh, just back. And sure. Do you want to kind of go back this way, or yeah, or of course. I Why guess not? we can't go in that way. All right. And uh, so just so it's nice, you can, as you can see, it's not lunchtime yet, but at lunchtime we'll have a lot of the people at work here sitting out here. They'll get their food in the cafeteria. 
and uh, come on out and sit at these nice outdoor tables. And by the way, the uh, embassy is able to, often when we do events, we'll set up tables and chairs and, uh, and, and even barbecue facilities here. We've really? done, yeah, we've done some promotions for, um, uh, you know, like uh, American uh, fish, you know, uh, it, um, salmon, uh, wild caught yeah. salmon, you know, coming in from Alaska, or we've done it for that great American beef. And you know, they'll actually cook it up out there. We'll often use German chefs and do that. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Well, we're gonna go down this hallway here. We always do a big party for Berlin Ala. Okay. And uh, we had about 500 people here last time and we set up this hallway with like statues of the Oscars <laughs> and, and the room we were just in, we, we, will, uh, we work with uh, Babelsberg Film Studios and they put, bring sets or, or props from sets and build it all up so it looks kind of like a, a Hollywood studio. And we have some extraordinary art on the walls here that uh, has um, been donated over the years. Uh, and that's, um, that's kind of fun. Every, we, we often get tours or people from uh, art museums who are on boards or involved in the visual arts. And, uh, and they basically want to um, you know, donate it and have their work seen. And now the room we're about to see over here is called the Ernst Kramer room, which you can't see over there, but I'm gonna walk around, you know? And, uh, and so, you know, right in here, we're not allowed to show you anything more here, apparently. This is, this is I'd show you, but I'd have to kill you territory. Apparently. So, uh, but the Ernst Kramer room, this is a, a fascinating story. He was Jewish, grew up in Germany, was interned in Buchenwald for a period of time, then was able to get a visa, one of the last visas that allowed him to go to the United States in 1939. Ultimately joined, became an American citizen, joined the army and was part of the troops that liberated Buchenwald okay. and decided he wanted to stay in Germany and see if he could help in the rebuilding process. And ultimately Axel Springer <laughs> hired him because he was also a journalist hired him to be first the deputy editor of uh, Die Welt, mm -hmm. and then ultimately he became the publisher of Welt on Sonntag, yeah, Sonntag right. and, uh, and then became the chairman of the Axel Springer Foundation. So Ernst Kramer is an important German, an important American, and behind these walls is, a, is actually a public room where we do a lot of our events called the Ernst Kramer Room in, in his honor. So you like to meet people over here and show them the embassy, is that right? Yeah, we, it's, a, it's a great thing to do to have a chance to show them the embassy. I, I have many of my friends who are ambassadors in other cities and I say, oh, can I see your embassy? They say, oh, you don't want to see it. It's set way aside, it's surrounded by a parking lot, you know, lot and fences. It's not that attractive, but this is really a, 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 great, uh, a great facility and a great building and now a part of the new Berlin. So if I am not a journalist or not a politician, how can, let's say, normal Berlin people uh, come into the embassy? Is this well, we sometimes will do uh, tours and, mm -hmm. and sometimes we bring in different groups, you know, school groups or, uh, you know, different organizations that, you know, ask to come in for a meeting. And, and we do a lot of that. Our public diplomacy uh, effort does a lot of that. So it's, um, it's possible for people to come in. I'd say just pick up the phone and call me, but then I would never get anything done. <laughs> so maybe just go back to sure. the fireplace area and we can talk a bit about uh, presidential elections in the USA. Oh, okay, sure. Important. Well, go ahead. So um, I know that in the 90s you belonged to President Clinton's senior staff. Yes. So do you have con had contact with the Clintons off the job? Oh, absolutely. We are, well, first of all, on the job, I had a lot of contact with them. And after the job, we, we We've maintained our friendship. Uh, both Clintons have been to our house in Los Angeles, um, and we've had both Clintons come as visitors here in Berlin. Yeah. Uh, Bill Clinton came shortly after I arrived here, and was um, uh, it was actually during the government shutdown in October of 2013, and we had him come right into this room here, the cafeteria, and we cleared out all the tables, brought in the embassy staff, and he talked to them, which was a wonderful experience. And then Hillary Clinton came 
about a year ago, she happened to be in uh, she happened to be in um, uh, Berlin uh, for a book tour. She was yeah. promoting her book, and we did a big uh, uh, reception for her at the residence, our residence, and we had a nice dinner with her afterwards and all that. And and we talk to them regularly. And of course, their staff people are good personal friends of ours, so there's communication there as well. But obviously, um, as ambassador, I'm not allowed to be at all involved in the presidential campaign. So I, on that one, I'm more observing and trying to explain it yeah. to what's happening to the people of Germany, which sometimes is a challenge. And do the members of the embassy and you follow the presidential election? Oh, it, we, we follow it very carefully. And if you think about it, that's part of our job. Our, part of our job is to explain the United States of America to Germany. And part of our job is to explain Germany back to you know yes. the United States and uh, and so we all get lots and lots of questions about it so we follow it very very closely and what we try to do on social media and I do interviews all the time and talk to journalists all the time about what's happening in the presidential campaign how it works the whole process and um, uh, you know it's a good uh, it's something we pay a lot of attention to so just let us think about the possibility that Donald Trump uh, could become the next president of the United States. Um, who would be the first person you would call? Uh, well, I don't know who the first person I would call. My guess is I'd get a lot of calls from people. <laughs> okay. uh, but uh, I will be, uh, so here's what we're going to do on election night. We're going to mm -hmm. have be part of a big election night party. Okay. And the presidential election won't get called, in other words, the um, uh, the, the newscasters and all won't say who the next president is. At er the earliest will be 5 a.m. Berlin, Berlin time. And the reason, the, you know, the, so the morning after the election day. And the reason it's that is because the California polls won't close until 8 p.m. California okay. time. And that's nine hours, right? Nine yeah. hours behind us. So at 5 a.m. I will presumably be at a big event with hundreds of, uh, of Germans and Americans and uh, they will have all the televisions there yeah. and then I'll announce it so there won't be any first phone call but there will certainly be a lot of people I'll be talking to uh, very early in the morning bleary eyed I think. <laughs> Um, um, maybe my last question uh, so you said once that you're as you said, that you want to buy an apartment in Berlin, but probably gonna leave Germany for a while at first. So what are you gonna do if uh, your term of office is over? Well, typically we serve at the pleasure of the president. And uh, and so it usually, if there's a, a president from a different party who comes in, all the, the ambassadors, you know, resign and leave shortly after they're inaugur inaugurated, which would be January 20th, 2017. If the president is of the same party they will often ask you to stay a few months okay. longer so that there's not such a long gap between mm -hmm. one ambassador leaving and another ambassador you know coming in uh, so we, I mean honestly I don't know what that what those circumstances will be in my situation but what we would probably do is return to our home in California mm -hmm. And uh, then I have to start thinking about um, how I'm going to pay the rent. <laughs> <laughs> and what you're going to miss the most? Oh, uh, I think unquestionably our friends. We've made so many friends here in Germany and Berlin, elsewhere in Germany. Uh, we love the lifestyle, but it's fundamentally, it's about the people. And, uh, and we will certainly miss the people. But we're hoping that a lot of our friends will visit us in California. <laughs> And the reason to invest in an apartment here in Berlin is not just because it might be a good investment, but because then we'll have an excuse to come back regularly and see our <laughs> friends. But it's really important as an ambassador leaves, because we're you know pretty high profile, to keep a low profile when you come back, because it's not fair to the new ambassador who comes in. So uh, you won't see me going around and giving speeches or interviews or anything like that. I'll just we'll just come in quietly and see our friends and really enjoy the life of Berlin in a way that with my schedule and the security and everything else, I'm not able to uh, enjoy it uh, quite in the same way these days. Okay, 
So thank you for the interview. Thank you. And we hope that you enjoy your last month in Berlin. And maybe if you are not uh, ambassador anymore and you come back, we'll see you on the streets. Absolutely. <laughs> You'll see me on the streets. Hopefully not holding my hat out for coins. I'll, I'll hopefully be doing a little better than that. Anyway, wonderful. Thank you for coming in. And thank you all for coming in and having this tour of the embassy. Tschüss. <laughs>